And now for something completely different. Here's what's coming up this hour on today's experience. Oh my goodness, it's wild and wonderful. What's going to happen? We have no idea. Let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Can I get a Wowser Bowser Wednesday? Which I did yesterday, even though it was Tuesday. Uh, And that's all because you know what? God. Who? God is in charge of this crazy bus called The Christian Journey. Yeah, first I felt an urge from the Lord to share this specific message, and we've examined it from different perspectives, and we'll continue to do so in the future. There needs to be a mutual understanding between you, me, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit regarding our relationship with God. This understanding is that we are summoned to commune with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Next, the key is to comprehend this formula. It's from the Father, through the Son, and by the Spirit. Can I say that again? It's from the Father, through the Son, and by the Spirit. God invites us to fellowship and sends Jesus Christ to us so we can grasp this communion. Jesus then resides in our hearts through faith, while the Holy Spirit takes up actual residency in our bodies. God is on the throne, the Son is at the right hand, and the Holy Spirit is present before the throne, as well as within each individual who calls upon the name of the Lord. So finally, what's crucial for us is to be aware that we need to be filled with the fullness of God. The fullness originates from the Father, but also comes from the Son and by the Spirit. The key element here is that the Spirit of God is our breath in God. Without breath, we cannot live. Therefore, we need to have the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continually active in our minds, our hearts, and our bodies. David Spoon's life has been an experience. While growing up in a Jewish family, he made a wrong turn towards drug abuse. Then David Spoon found Jesus Christ, and his life completely changed. The more he studied the gospel, the more he wanted to share his experiences with others. After 35 years of ministry, David discovered a new path of service. He joined KAAM, and this radio program began. You're about to hear the David Spoon Experience. Welcome to the David Spoon Experience, local, national, and heavenly talk. Here's what else we're looking at during the show. Lessons for surviving, living, and prevailing. Politics, entertainment, and current events. Personal revelations. Yikes. Spiritual observations. My life's insanities. So much more. Now... We have told you hundreds of times. It's not professional radio. It's just radio. But we are asking you, what do you think? So you can email us during the show, david at hemustincrease.org. That's david at hemustincrease.org. You can text us live during the show, 214-210-8483. That's 214-210-8483. Or you can call us at 972-445-0770. That's 972-445-0770. When you call 972-445-0770, you'll end up talking to Jimmy and Jacob. <laughs> talking to Jim and Jacob is like waking up and feeling like you got a great night's sleep. Yay! Hey. Thank you, David. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you, my friend. We will be doing a Jake's Take tomorrow since the Dallas Mavs are playing tonight. So we'll do a review on that and see what's happening there. So here's one of the things that I want people to be aware of. Uh, We always can use prayer. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, But I do want you to be aware of a couple things. If you want to reach out to us, you are welcome to do so by those ways that you can either email uh, the David at hemustincrease.org. You can text 214-210-483. You can call 972-445-0770. So I want to talk a little bit more before we go into breaking down why you would call and so on and so forth, a little bit more what we were talking about prior. And that has to do with, and this whole message is about the Holy Spirit abiding inside of us. 
And so it's important for you and I to grasp a couple of things, and I'm going to put, I think, a couple of fears to ease if you are concerned about this. There's a doctrine called the perseverance of the saints, which has to do with the understanding that once God saves you, you're saved. And there is no ifs, ands, or buts. God does the salvation. He does the work. If you're wondering whether I believe in the perseverance of the saints, I do. If you're just like, do you believe that? Yes. What I do not buy into is that everybody who says they're a Christian is a Christian. Any more than I buy into everybody that goes to church is definitely going to heaven. Don't buy into that either. And here is the biggest thing that you need to remember. So here's what I want you to grasp so you can know where I'm coming from. If you, in your heart, ever, listen to what I'm saying to you, if you have ever thought, oh, Lord, gee, I hope I'm going to make it. That is the best testimony in the universe that you are saved and secure. You want to know why? Because only people that care ask that question. So what does that mean? That means you got nothing to worry about. If you're sitting there going, oh, I hope I make it, you're going to make it. Nobody cares unless you're saved. Only saved people care. Non-saved people don't care. But Christianity is not a faith that is a one-and-done and never used again idea. And while many people have raised their hands, stood up, and even went to the altar, the day after, it was just like eating a pizza and then going out the next day and having steak. It was just a part of their lives, not that big a deal. Christianity cannot be just a part of one's life. Christianity has to be your life. You don't get to be a Christian and then go, I'll just do whatever I want. And then just at the very last second, I'll say, oops, sorry. And think God's going to say, oh, that's good enough. Because it's not good enough because Esau sought repentance and could not find it. So no, if you have a genuine faith in Christ, all is good. But it's got to be a genuine faith. Does that mean it doesn't go up and down? No, of course it goes up and down. Of course you have better times than others. Of course you flourish in the faith, and other times you are like feeling it like you're in the wilderness. Who doesn't go through that? Everybody goes through that. Nothing weird about that. People struggle with sin. There's nothing weird about that. The idea that Scripture teaches us is that we have the power over sin through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ. It's just that so too many of us are not using it. And the fact of the matter is we have the mind of Christ, but a lot of people don't operate with the mind of Christ. Is your salvation secure? Absolutely. More secure than the foundation of the earth. But your faith has to be genuine. It can't be verbal. And it can't be sporadic in the sense of here one day, gone the next. You either believe in Jesus or you don't. It's kind of like pregnant. You can't be a little bit pregnant. Get it? Okay. Thank you. All right. So now that I've said all that, trying to put certain minds at ease, so everybody be at ease, (laughs) okay? Let's go back to why you would call us or why you would text us or why you would email us. And that's simple. For praise reports, for prayer requests, for sharing something that's going on, for sharing a bad joke, because we have lots of people that can do that, for having the opportunity just to connect, All of that is available. Maybe you have in your mind and in your heart a thinking process where you're thinking, you know, I kind of believe I can answer Bible trivia. Well, I'll give you an easy one to open the door, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Who is this person? I opened the Red Sea with the help of the Lord, and Aaron was my brother. Exodus 14.21 Exodus 4.14. I opened the Red Sea. Aaron was my brother. Who am I? If you think you know the answer, you can call 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email david at he must increase.org. So those are the opportunities that you have. People are like going, why did you go on that rant on that one thing and one thing? And being Baptist is really an advantage. <laughs> Let me just say this. 
having the master's degree from one group and the and the doctor from another group is really a, an advantage. I am one of those that loves all theology. I stand though, just like everyone does their best to, in absolutely the word of God is it. That is our final plumb line authority. And I am of the persuasion that God does not save partially, but some people who claim to be saved maybe should reexamine what that means. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. And I think you can find about 50 of them in about 30 seconds if you go into the political realm. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to move on from that real fast. Anyway, all right, so the trivia question. Uh, I opened the Red Sea. Aaron was my brother. Who am I? We have somebody ready to answer the trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock, this is David. Who am I talking to? This is Gary. Hi, Gary. How are you? Well, about the same, but I just keep praying. And we keep praying with you, and we love you, and that's part of it. And see, what I love about your persistence is that exactly, that is exactly what the Lord wants. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You keep doing that. You have that bulldog attitude and faith that says, I am going to keep knocking until it is opened. That is what the Lord wants from us. Okay. Let me set up the trivia question, and then you answer it, and we'll go from there. I opened the Red Sea with the help of the Lord, and Aaron was my bro. Who am I? Uh, Moses. That is correct, but now you are Mo. And Marion was his sister. And Marion was his sister. That is correct. It's all in the family right there. <laughs> it's all in the family. All right, my friend, let me pray over you and ask the Lord to bless you and heal you. Let's do it in the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Let's bring it to the Lord. Father, I lift up my brother Gary to you, and I thank you for him. And I want him in his heart to know that not just myself, but the people in this audience, we love him. He is loved by his radio family. And we are asking you to bring the power that comes from the Holy Spirit into Gary's body. The same power, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead into his body and bring healing where nothing else can help him except for you. And we know that, but we need your help. We need you to pour it out upon Gary in his body. We need the Jehovah Rapha we read about. We need the stripes by which we are healed to manifest that power in Gary's life. It's not us, Lord. It's you. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. That's what you teach us. And in the name of Jesus, we ask you to pour your Holy Spirit into him and heal him. To your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you, and I'll be praying for all of you. Thank you, brother. God bless you as well. Okay, so two things we got to do. We're going to do our DNA real quickly, but before we do that, I am going to tell you we do have a modified schedule this week for those who do not know. Modified, 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 modified schedule. Thank you. You think they got that on that third one? Maybe, maybe they got that modified thing. Uh, say it a few more times. Modified, modified. Modified. Okay, anyway. Okay, I think they got it. They got it. Uh, so uh, you just check that out on the website. You'll be able to see. Uh, should be at the top of the website. Plus, on the website, there are you know some other things. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but the, there's four books up there. Four. That's right, four. If you haven't seen it, go to the website. Check it out. You'll get it. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to do our DNA, and then we'll get into the ferociousness of the teaching. Arr. Uh, D, as most of you know, which is very important, stands for Draw Closer to the Lord. Daily. Every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Every day that ends in Y, spend some time with a guy in the sky. Same thing happened to me today. That happened yesterday. That happened the day before. I'm doing stuff, and then it's time to spend time with the Lord. After I spend time with the Lord, it just seems like none of the other stuff seemed more as important. I just don't know any other way to say it. It's almost as though I get from time to time that spending time with God puts the priorities straight. And if that's the case, well, then let's spend time with him every day so we can get our priorities straight. That's all. You're worried about what? Tell that to him in his presence. Okay. I'm just, there you go. Okay. Draw closer to the Lord daily, D. And never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. 
I am telling you, you know, that the, the big thing that I was uh, kind of reviewing this the other day, but the big thing about Billy Graham that was so awesome is he made a conscious decision to say, I am going to be a Bible believer. I'm going to believe the word of God. So now there's a late rumor out, and these are the kind of things that drive me bonkers. Oh, oh the lost gospel has the earliest teachings. First of all, there is no lost gospel, and if you understand Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelation, you know that there's four gospels. It's made quite clear in all three books. I'm just not going to get into that right now. But uh, there is no lost gospel of Thomas. That's just absurdity. And all of the writers in the New Testament wrote in the first hundred years, not 400 and 50 years later, which is also absurdity. Don't pay attention to that. Never be ashamed of the word of God. Why? Because God who created the universe can write a book. And to think he can't write a book is just dumb. <laughs> Sorry. <gasps> that's so mean. Yeah, that's you're right. It is. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, that's how it goes. Never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. Never be ashamed of what he had to say. Never. Even if you, as an individual, don't get everything. Hey, congratulations. Welcome to life. But God gets everything. Never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. Luke 9, 26. And then A, always be ready. <laughs> To serve. To serve. That was a good one, right? That was. <laughs> the suspense, the, the build-up. The suspense. Up. Always be ready to serve. It's not, here's the thing. Don't be ready to pounce. That's, if you are into news websites, you already know you're ready to pounce. Okay? All right. That is not the gospel call. <laughs> Okay. You're not ready to go. I got my Bible bullets. I'm ready. <laughs> that's, not, that's, that's not how that works. Okay. If Jesus wanted to rip everybody to shreds, every statement he made, he would have. He could have. He didn't. He served them. Yep, I guess we got to follow Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I want to be just like you. Not only do I accept you as my Lord and Savior, but make me like you. How many of you prayed that? Not only do, do I acknowledge you, not only do I repent of my sins, not only do I, I say yes, I, I surrender. Make me like you. Okay, well, here's what Jesus did. He came to serve. There you go. Be ready to always be like Jesus, right? Best you can. Draw closer to the Lord daily, D. N, never be ashamed of Jesus or his words. A, always be ready to serve. Short break, we'll be coming back. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the true station here in Texas. Don't go anywhere. What is the David Spoon experience? For this is the kind of high priest we need. Holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He doesn't need to offer sacrifices every day as high priests do, first for their own sins and then those of the people. He did this once for all when he offered himself. Now watch this. Oh, boy. This is so unbelievable. Jesus is a unique kind of priest. He is your high priest. He is so unique. And you think, well, why? What, what is it that makes Jesus unique? And you already know, well, it's because he's you know, born from the Holy Spirit and he's born from Mary. So he's fully man, fully God. And it's like, okay, I get that part. But there's something else that we miss quite often. And that is Jesus is undefiled, separated for, from sinners. And verse 27 says he doesn't, he, he doesn't need to offer sacrifices every day like the high priests do, first for their own own sins. So let me explain this to you. When priests or petitioners or people are praying on your behalf, every human being has to deal with their own set of sins. It doesn't matter if it's the high priest of Israel. It doesn't matter if it's, high, if, if it's the high priest one year, 20 years later, 40 years later. There is something that takes place. It's the same dynamic that takes place when you spend time with the Lord. 
and you come before the Lord and you thank him and you recognize the grace of God enables you to stand because apart from that, the grace, apart from the mercy, apart from the love that comes from the Lord in the redeeming work from, from Jesus Christ that you receive by faith, that he gives by grace, apart from that, you're a mess. And so when you come before the Lord, you're like, Lord, you know, please forgive me. Please don't be mad. Please, you know, don't chasten me. David said it great. Don't chasten me in your hot displeasure. I don't want to get you irritated. Nah, 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 nah. You see, when Jesus comes and petitions for us, he doesn't have to go through that. He doesn't have to be centered on himself to be forgiven because there's nothing for him to be forgiven. He's sinless. He doesn't need to offer sacrifices for what he's done or for any of the lacking that he uh, uh, would have if he was a regular human priest. So when Jesus comes on our behalf, there's nothing, get this, get this, here it is. There's nothing distracting him in his life. He is only focused on our well-being. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. We're getting ready for your next trivia question. And here we go. I hosted two angels in my house. I am related to Abraham. Who am I? Genesis 19, 1 through 3. I hosted two angels in my house. Hey, boys, come on in. I am related to Abraham. Who am I? Genesis 19, 1 through 3. If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david, at he must increase dot org. So this is the kind of show where I know the Lord is doing more than I can do. <laughs> so I'm just going along for the ride, folks. I do want to remind you that we did accomplish today, and I want you to keep Jacob in prayer, as well as Jennifer, and as well as Don. Keep Don in prayer. I would never do his ministry. I would just wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Uh, but anyway, uh, keep them in prayer. But Jacob helped me finish today, so we have the first run done on uh, Broken for His Glory. Uh, I was able to catch so many more mistakes. <laughs> so many more mistakes. I'm just so happy about it because at least it's cleaned. And uh, then the, the, the audio book will be coming relatively soon. Uh, I just don't know exactly when, but relatively soon. All right, so once again, on the trivia question, just making sure you got it, making sure that we're kind of connected here. I hosted two angels, and I'm related to Abraham. Who am I? Genesis 19, 1 through 3. And I do think we have somebody ready to answer the trivia question. Is that correct? Well, let's go ahead and send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hi, David. Uh, this is Free. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Fred. How are you doing? I'm still in one piece. I'm still in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> I did mention you earlier in the show. I don't know if you heard me or not, but in the early part of the show, I mentioned that you had uh, appreciated that that what I was able to share last week on David saying, you know, do not cast uh, me away from my yeah, presence. Yeah, thank you. I'm just, I'm just spacing out for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. Tell me what's happening. Are you, are you ready for the triv? Yeah, so I have to ask you a trip, but I want to just make a comment. I, I really have to answer the question. The answer to your question, obviously, is lot. It is lot! That is correct, Amundo! <laughs> now, now, before you say anything else, I want you to give you. I, I got this. It's, it's a great joke. Why was Abraham so smart? Because he knew a lot. There I'm it is. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, there it that, is. So. That would be a pretty, that's, that's pretty good, David. That's I, not I, bad. They got left out of me. <laughs> That's right. Not too shabby. <laughs> All right, talk to me, brother. What's happening? I just think you are right on point today. I believe that there is God. There is an appeal by God today for the bachelors to come back home and 
if they, I think that it is very, very essential that once you are saved, that you are filled with the Holy Spirit, because what the Holy Spirit does is that he multitasks. He not only comes to make you speak in tongues or shout and dance and run up and down the house, but he comes to convict your heart when you are wrong. And I did say convict rather than condemn because he does not condemn us. He convicts us of our sins and drives us, for, uh, just prepares us to, to repent and God for forgiveness. And once we do that, then God, the Bible says in Psalms 86 and 15 that God is full of compassion. And it also says in Psalms 86 and 5 that God is ready to forgive. And I believe if we come to God with a pure heart and meaning busy with him when we fall short, I believe with my whole heart that God will forgive us and that he will, re- will receive us back into the fold. The scripture says in uh, Deuteronomy 4, 29, but if from this thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou shalt seek him with all of thy heart and with all of thy soul. When you mean busy with God, believe me, he's going to take care of you. Amen. Preach it, brother. Excellent job. Excellent sharing job. That was phenomenal. So you just, you just, you just a preacher, Fred. You just a preacher. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm listening to a preacher. I'm listening to a scholar. <laughs> brother, you, you, it was a great, great way to say it. You did an excellent job. I really, I greatly, highly appreciate that you did that. Excellent work. Let's keep, let's, let's keep praying for each other and keep the back backlighter of listening today. But right. God is, 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 is He's just convicting them. He wants them to come home. Come home, Barbara, Jerry, James, whatever your name is. If you are a Christian, you backslidden, please come home. Come I home. think that's God's appeal to you. Amen. Excellent job, brother. All right. God bless you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. What a great, great job Fred did right there. So that's really, really important. So now people are like, okay, well, now you guys are freaking out now on the Holy Spirit. you know? And I know that's happening. So don't, don't get all weird. Here's the problem. And here's the... It's not the scholarly part. I like that, that Fred said it. Not quite a scholar. Annoying, persistent studier. <laughs> that, that might be me. Annoying, persistent studier. Annoying, especially the annoying part. But here's the thing you have to understand. God has communicated who he is. And we understand to a degree. Now, why is it that we only understand to a degree? Well, here's why we only understand to a degree. In other words, you're not going to get every single thing uh, about God now. And you think, well, why? Well, first of all, 1 Corinthians 13 says, we shall know because we shall see face to face. Now, in your current body, if you knew everything about God, uh, kind of like any of those uh, movies, you'd explode. Because you're finite and God is infinite. And so for you, in finite, to take infinite, it would go I mean, you would have no chance. Do you understand? The other part about this that I think is really important, and I think it's weird, and that is people are like, well, you know, you can talk about Jesus, and you can talk about God the Father, but you can't talk about the Holy Spirit. Really? So what's bizarre about that is the only sin that is unforgivable is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which kind of tells you God the Father and God the Son are very protective uh, of, of that part of God, that God the Holy Spirit, because uh, that's the only one that can really blow you out. But, Here's what I want you to catch, and this is maybe a way to understand possibly. I I don't want to say absolutely, but possibly give you a little bit of understanding because people will say, well, you know, the Trinity, it's like a a, a clover. Okay, well, I don't know where that came from, but here's, here's the truth of that matter. The truth of the matter is from that came everybody wants a four leaf clover. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's just push that to the side. So then other people are like, well, it's like H2O. It can be ice, it can be water, and it can be steam. Okay, that's not bad. I don't think that that's terrible. That's a great way to understand it, but it's all H2O. Okay, all right, cool, cool. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think we're going to fully grasp it, but to me, humanity is the best definition of the Trinity. <laughs> I know people. Uh, I mean, do you understand what that means? Humanity is the best definition of the Trinity. How is that possible? Because my name is what? My name is David. What's my name? David. What do people call me? David. Well, some people call me Schmo, but David. What does David have? A mind, a heart, and a body. But I am David. And they all are in perfect sympathetic. Well, they're not perfect, but God is perfect in this. But all work together. It's David. It's God. 
It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I just look at it as God the mind, God the, the Son is the heart, and the Holy Spirit is the body. I just think that's the way it, it, it is. Now, that's not perfect. That's not the best illustration. It's just an illustration. And what happens is because we don't know much that we or we act like we don't know much about the Holy Spirit, we have a problem with that because we can understand the Father and you can understand Jesus because you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but then when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we're all like going, ooh. That is incorrect. Since creation started in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the whole thing ends in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the command of Jesus is to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the book of Revelation starts with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and there's 70-plus references to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's enough. Stop being afraid because you don't grasp everything. Right? You don't grasp everything about God, but you still love him, right? Okay. Well, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Spirit, which we can fully understand, by the way, in this passage, 2 Corinthians 13, 14, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello. All connected. All right. We'll take a short break, come back, and then I'll show you where I'm heading with this. You're listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. This KAAM radio show with your very own David Spoon is not a business, but a nonprofit ministry first and foremost committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and strategically equipping the saints. Our mission is to educate, encourage, and entertain Christian believers, the hurting, and those not yet believers who need biblical truths. To continue our radio ministry and message of truth, we need many of our faithful listeners to support us, as well as ministry partners who might wish to sponsor the He Must Increase ministry. By giving, you wonderfully facilitate our priorities of assertively teaching the Word of God, and you get nothing in return. No quid pro quo. Nothing but a receipt at the end of the year indicating you gave to us since your donation is 100% tax deductible. Remember that it says in Corinthians that whoever sows generously will also reap generously, or in Proverbs where it teaches that a generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. But if you cannot give, no problem. Continue to enjoy and learn and give however you see fit whenever you can. To support us, go to hemustincrease.org. That's hemustincrease.org. Such support is terribly appreciated, knowing it enables our beloved David Spoon to give to all of us his time, energy, like so few can. Right here on KAAM. The David Spoon Experience. Teaching time. I don't know how we're going to do the breaks, Gabriel, so I'll just look at me. I'll let you know. I mean, this is the best I can tell you because I'm going to teach you something that I hope I, I – there's no way I can teach this. It's I can't teach the worth. I can't teach the value, but I'm going to do my best to share with you my heart in this process. As American people, as people who live in America, we have been granted the right to pursue happiness. And I want to make sure you understand what that this means. We have a preamble to the United States Declaration of Independence, and the preamble to the Declaration says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, I do want to point out it does not say life, liberty, and the provisions of or for happiness. In other words, the rights that we have in the preamble is that we get to pursue happiness, not that it's provided for us by the government. So that's kind of an important point for people to recognize. It would be nice if they quit try to quote, quit trying to quote our founding fathers and then say they're entitled to something because of that provision because it never says that. Sometimes I... Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Time for your next trivia question. Who is this person? 
I cannot give you a reference on this one because <laughs> it makes it too simple. I talked about tithes and offerings. The last book of the Old Testament was written by me. Who am I? If you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. You can also text 214 210 Eight four eight three. Additionally, you can send an email, David at he must increase dot org. So I'm going to send you up to the website, which I have not had a chance to do the entire show. An entire hour went by in this show. I haven't even had a chance to talk about uh, sending you to the website. So I'm going to send you to the website. Listen up, please. There's some cool stuff there about the books. There's a place to put personal and public. Praise reports and prayer requests, you are well able, allowed to do that. Plus, there is a place to give. So let me make this really clear. We need money. Okay. Is that is that clear? I don't know. That, and if you want me to do the, the whole dance, I can do the dance. We need money. Okay. So bottom line is uh, money would help. All right, uh, on our scripture for giving, uh, Luke 6, 38, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you use will be measured back to you. That's a promise from God. That, that goes way past all of us, right? Given it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it will be put into your lap. For the measure you use will be measured back to you. If you can't give, don't worry. Stop that. Stop doing that. No guilty thing here. We don't do that. But if you can, give, give, because we need it. How about that? That makes it very simple. Check out that stuff, plus the cool-looking books. I got them all four right and across uh, right on the, on the, about uh, six inches down on the website. Check out hemustincrease.org. Prayer request? Hemustincrease.org. Praise report? Hemustincrease.org. Looking to give to this ministry? Hemustincrease.org. Confused by what's happening right now? Hemustincrease.org. Hemustincrease.org. Yes! I was just singing that last night as I was sleeping. All right. Uh, our trivia question. That's right. Sometimes you can, you can make a joke. Uh, our trivia question is uh, who this person is. I talked about tithes and offerings. The last book of the Old Testament was written by me. Who is that person? We do have somebody on the line ready to answer that trivia question. Let's send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Hello, this is Bobby. Hello, Bobby. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Just got off my mower, so uh just and take a bath, and I heard the question. I thought before I get wet and get electrocuted by the phone, I better answer it. Well, then now you're good. you have to answer it now because you have set the whole thing up. <laughs> now you're right there, and I, I feel strongly in my heart you'll get this right. All right. Who um, is, yeah, I, I think you'll know. I, I, who is this person? I talked about okay. tithes and offerings, and the last book of the Old Testament was written by me. Who am I? That would be Malachi. That is correct, Amundo! I just read him last week. <laughs> there you go. And it's like one of my favorite, even though the, the ties and the offerings is in there, one of my favorite portions is in the Malachi 2 where he goes, you have wearied me with your words. <laughs> and people I are like, <laughs> you, you never get God tired. Uh, Want to bet? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad I made it in to get part of your show in. I uh, uh, hope you have a blessed day, and uh, we'll catch you tomorrow then. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Uh, God bless you, too, All and right. everybody that is listening. All Thank right. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. It's just one of those shows. I love shows like this. I love shows like this. I don't know. All right. All right, let me do this. Now, people are going to they're gonna lose it. <laughs> just don't, don't lose it. When you're hearing something and you don't get it all, process, right? Is that a nice way to say that? Process or something? Take it in stride. <laughs> 
All right, let's see. We got the history. We got the jokes. I don't know. Let me do the teaching first, and then we'll see what – we'll just have to see what emerges. Okay, now listen to me. I'm going to do this all in a row, but I want you to catch it. It's really cool if you will just be like kind of – okay, 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 Dave. Go ahead. Go ahead. So listen. Ephesians 5.18, stop getting drunk with wine, which leads to wild living, but keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Like we said, very it's very simple. If we can have more of the Holy Spirit, well, then by golly, you can have less. So now you'd be thinking, well, what do you mean keep on being filled? If you're filled once, that's enough. Oh, really? Let's look at Acts 2.4 and Acts 4.31. Here's Acts 2.4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now here's Acts 4.31, two chapters later. When they prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak God's message with boldness. So what do you have? In one place they're filled, they're, sp- they're, speaking with, they're speaking in tongues. In the other place they're filled, they're speaking the message of God with boldness. But the point is that they had to be filled more than once. It's the same people. That's all. Okay. And what about this? Paul says in Ephesians 3, 16, I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in the inner man through his Holy Spirit. There's a long way to go. And many of us need to be strengthened multiple times. And here's the reason why. I'm going back to what Fred said. Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. As Christians, genuine Bible-believing, born-again Christians, if you have a genuine faith in Jesus Christ, you are okie-dokie, but you can still grieve the Spirit. Let me explain something to you. That's different than quenching the Spirit. Quenching the spirit is not is cutting the flow. That's First Thessalonians five nineteen. Don't quench the spirit. That's where you have the pipe between you and God. And when you quench the spirit, you're throwing mud and dirt and rocks in the pipe, and you're slowing down the flow between God and you. But to grieve the Holy Spirit is an entirely different Greek word, and it means to make sad. You don't want to make sad the Holy Spirit. How do you make sad the Holy Spirit? Allowing the deceitfulness of sin to pull you away to make you act like Adam and Eve and run and hide, or make you act like Cain and said, I'm not responsible, or make you act like Lamech going, if it was bad then, it's worse now. All of that progressive sin. You have to catch this. That sin will not separate you from God in eternity, but it will quench what God is desiring to do in you, through you, and with you. And why would you want to make God sad? So, with that in mind, just exactly what Fred said, keying right off of it. If you're a person and you you know you know you believe, you know you really believe it. You find some solace in, well, I don't have to be perfect. But that's just a justifying statement. You're just trying to feel good about yourself, basing everything on your feelings. If you are distant from the Lord, come home. The prodigal story is one of the great, great stories of Jesus' teaching, and the father was looking for the son and saw him a long way off. He's just waiting for you. No, you won't do everything perfect, and yes, you will mess up again. But he's just waiting for you. Go home. That's what you should do, okay? All right. We'll take a break. And by the way, we'll take a break, and then I'll explain how to go home. You're listening to the David Smoot Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. Short break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. What is the David Spoon experience? All right, Psalm 46, verse 1 through 3. This was the first 
a psalm that was read to me when I went to Bible college, the very first class I ever took in Bible college, a bazillion years ago. Let me just say that. Psalm 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their suffering. Here is something to consider that will be just absolutely a mind blower. How should you and I respond if the earth falls out of its rotation? <laughs> okay, so so my uh, brother-in-law works for JPL and is actually one of the people that helped write the program that helped land the Mars rover on Mars. He helped write the computer programming, okay? He's much smarter than me in those realms, okay? About my age, a little younger, about my age. Very, very intelligent guy, right? And uh, he's the one I always make a joke, you know, what, what, what keeps the Earth, you know, rotating. And so you'll hear me say uh, that it's on a perfect 23 and a half degree, uh, you know, a rotation uh, from the moon and from the, the exact rotation from the sun, or it's three mice chasing a piece of cheese and a wheel, <laughs> one of those two. So uh, the idea behind that and that whole story is the earth is in this absolutely perfect rotation with, all, with uh, the moon and the sun, and without it, the earth would go through a free fall. Just even a half a degree off, pfft, it's over. It's all over. I mean, the, 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 there would be instant tidal waves. Everything would just be upside down. And if that ever happened, you know, you would know that's the end, although that's not how the end's going to happen. We already know from Scripture. But here's what the, the psalmist is saying. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter if your world seems like it's upside down. It doesn't matter if it's out of rotation. It doesn't matter if there, the mountains fall into the sea. It doesn't, doesn't matter if the waters roar. God is a refuge, and a refuge is a shelter in a storm. You would first think of a lean-to. That is what a, a shelter in a storm is. So when it's raining, you find a lean-to, you put something on a tree, you put it uh, you know, against something else, and you get under it so you're away from that. And it says that God is a refuge, a strength, an ever-present help, which means he's helpful today, not just when it's all settled in eternity. And there's that lies a problem for some Christians is they keep thinking, well, in the sweet by and by, everything will get worked out. Well, that is true, that everything will be completely worked out in the sweet by and by. But God is an ever-present help, which means for today and not just for tomorrow. And then the position of the psalmist is, therefore, 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 in other words, it's a conclusion. So God is our refuge and strength, okay? So he's our lean-to in a storm. He's our ever-present help. Therefore, I don't have to be afraid. The David Spoon Experience. Welcome back to the David Spoon Experience. Thank you for joining us here at KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. That's KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas. We're going to do a very quick trivia question and a very quick history and then finalize on the teaching. Our trivia question for those that are interested, as soon as I can find the piece of paper that I put the trivia question on, which means that I put it behind something, which is really kind of funny because I shouldn't have done that. Uh, the trivia question is simply this. Ah, who is this person? Uh, Esther chapter 2 verse 7 is going to be a reference point. I was the uncle of a queen, and I put to nullification <laughs> Haman's degree, degree. Who am I? Esther chapter 2 verse 7. I was the uncle of a queen, and I, I put... To, to the test, Haman's decree, Esther chapter 2, verse 7, if you think you know the answer, 972-445-0770. You can also text 214-210-8483. Additionally, you can send an email, david at he must increase.org. So we got a person on hold. Can they wait a second? Because I want to do a quick history. Can we do that real fast? Because there's one really cool thing in history. So let's do history. Let's go live in the past. Let's go live in the past. 
Okay, I just got to do these just real couple, real fast, really, really kind of cool. Number one, today is Superman Day. Yay! Isn't that cool? It's Superman Day for yeah. the day that he came is, out with Superman. He's the oldest. Is he the oldest super, superhero? Well, he's the oldest action superhero. He's not technically okay. the oldest hero, but uh, but that number one comic book worth is worth <laughs> more than most businesses will ever dream of. Anyway, I'm just saying. Uh, here's the other two things. Today is National Jerky Day for beef jerky, and I like beef jerky, and I will tell you that I went to Bucky's, and the one that I like the most right now is jalapeno and honey. It is so good. It does good. sound good. It is so good. It's like, wow, that is outrageous. And then uh, finally, I think this is important because uh, Noel loves these, and so do I. So that's a danger. It's like a danger zone. It's National Peanut Butter Cookie Day. And uh, those are good too. <laughs> that's, I just want to tell you right now, that's a problem. <laughs> so, those are all really good things to think about from history. I'm just trying to make everybody hungry before they were supposed to eat dinner. Uh, we have somebody ready to answer a trivia question. Let us send them on through. Knock, knock. This is David. Who am I talking to? Is this Spotify Superman? Hello, Superman. How are you? Good. Oh, that is. <laughs> All right, my friend, we are on a tight time frame, so I'm going to run you right through it. I was the uncle of a queen, and I brought down Hangman's <laughs> decree. This is out of Esther oh, chapter God. 2, verse 7. Who am I? Mordecai. Mordecai! <laughs> that is correct, Amundo! It's Mordecai. Don't you love that story? Don't you remember Purim? Remember all the all the the, the cookies? Oh, it was so much fun. Remember that growing up? That, that's what we had when we were growing up. and we love <laughs> How you doing? We got about a minute, so I need you to talk because I need yes. to figure out how to Okay, please, please pray for my friend that I'm praying. Uh, actually, in, yeah, that yeah, the couple is just doing some really spiritual warfare. He's supposed to be te- doing preaching last Sunday, but he ended up with a 104 or 107 temperature, so he wasn't able to do it. And then uh, the other friend, like, uh, she is just having some depression issue, which is kind of, uh, yeah, odd. But we're going to keep praying, and we're going to keep praying, and we're going to keep praying. Okay, let me do this. Let me pray over them real fast. Father, we come before you right now. We lift up Samson's friends to you. Lord, any time the message gets thwarted, we, we, we know that's not the end of the, the war, but it's a portion of the battle. And so we just ask you to give strength and healing to his friend in that warfare element, as well as the gal with the depression and discouragement and her, her, the warfare that they're going through. But we really ask you that you would give Samson just the spirit of wisdom, on how to pray and counsel and encourage these folks and get them back on track to the place they really need to be, which ultimately is closer to you. And we just lift them up before you and ask to you break the shackles that are holding them back. We ask you to help Samson in that process, but we pray it with him, joining our faith with his, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right, brother. God bless you. God bless and shalom. Shalom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Excellent job by Samson, our brother. Here's the bottom line. We just talked about people coming home, and we just talked about people who need more of the Holy Spirit, and some people are grieving the Holy Spirit, making the Holy Spirit, some people are quenching the Holy Spirit, cutting down the flow. What do you do? How do you go home? What do you do? How do you change that in your life? If you're a Christian, you're like, well, I know the Holy Spirit's in me, but not very much. (laughs) And some people say, you know what? It'd be really nice if somebody would just say that once in a while because you got to get the impression that's going on for a lot of people. Here's what you do. Ready? Jesus told everybody what to do. Luke 11, 9 through 13. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father, your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Listen, this is all present tense. You can't escape this. 
How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Perfect present tense. You want to know how you come home? You ask. You want to know how you get more of the Holy Spirit? You ask. You don't have to do a dance. You don't have to be brilliant. You don't have to be theological. You got to be real. That's what you got to be. You got to push past hypocrisy or the need to show others anything. Stop that. I don't have a heaven to put you in. What do you care? Ask the Father in the name of the Son to pour the Holy Spirit into you. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? There you go. Because Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, does that mean you got a hyper on the Holy Spirit to the degradation of the Father and the Son? No. But if you're supposed to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and he's your counselor, then have counseling sessions. That's all. Well, how does that all work? I don't know. I mean, I can give you all the brilliant theological whatevers. You know what? The Lord knows how to handle it. Come to the Lord. Ask for help. And if you're far away, if you're backslid, you can't run forever. God's got a better pair of sneakers. And Jesus will always be a better Savior than you are a sinner. So let that happen. And if you're just like, you know, I'm operating kind of under, under it. Ask God to fill you. He wants people. You know what's so amazing about this? He wants people to ask him. For some of us, he's waiting for us to ask him. It's like, okay, that's enough. So ask for the fullness of God in every capacity, that you are closer to the Father through the Son, and by the Spirit, then your life will just be better, period. All right, folks, you've been listening to the David Spoon Experience right here on KAAM 770, the truth station here in Texas, taking a 22 and a half hour break, then we'll come back. More insanity with Spoonanity. Talk to you then. The views expressed on the preceding program were those of the speakers and not necessarily those of KAAM, DJRD Broadcasting, or its sponsors.